it's it's funny because it seemed like we went from loving him when we first drafted Frank, like oh we should have got the SJ yeah. to we had a chance at Kyrie and Kemba, like, oh, get rid of DSA, yeah, yeah, yeah. get rid right. of these I mean, He get this motivation level where it's not just like, I'm trying to kill this next dude, but like, mm-hmm. I have high, high standards for myself. Mm-hmm. I'm not dipping below here. They, they, yeah. they told him though, it's like, hey man, his starting job is wide open. open. They told yeah. him that mm. as they were recruiting him in LA. So yeah. Perry, he kind of set up this roster to be a dogfight. And even when he first- Knicks fan TV, the podcast, salute to Knicks Nation out there. CP from Knicks fan TV. My man Jay Ellis from the Nick of Time Show. We are live from the Knicks Fan TV studio in downtown New York City. Special guest, my man Terrence Ross. What's up? The real, the real Terrence Ross. <laughs> the real Terrence Ross in Dude, the give building. Me some dot, yeah, man. Don't let me hang Terry's in here. <laughs> we got my man V, the Nets fan, controlling the production Boo. in the background. Yeah, yeah. But don't edit that. But <laughs> 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 So just in case any Mickey Mouse sounds, any high low audio levels, just know uh, we've been sabotaged. So we're gonna, try to, <laughs> we're gonna try to take it easy on them, man. But uh, fellas, how you feeling, man? I'm good. I'm ready. Yeah, like yeah. that's how I feel. I mean, I'm glad FIBA's coming up because yeah. just in general, I'm excited to watch just basketball. Not even Same. just like Frank with France, but like just you know Serbia been killing it. I'm excited to see what that's gonna look like. Yeah. The, you know, we saw the Australia game was pretty fun the other day. Mm-hmm. So let's get some basketball in. Let's get to training camp. Let's get started. About a month away from training camp. Yeah, man. I'm creeping in, man. Yep. I'm with Terry. I'm with Terry and Bobby Portis, man. I just want (laughs) to start. (laughs) Bobby (laughs) Bobby. Bobby. He said it today. He's like, I'm ready. Let's go. I'm ready. I've seen all the training videos I wanted to see. I seen DSJ oh, got the nice DSA going <laughs> jumper in. going in, dropping yes, fifty pieces yes, everywhere. Like I see Frank trying to get his stuff together in FIBA. I, I just I just, I just want to go get it all together. Let's go. Let's get these these, these battles going. I yeah. think they're ready too. You can see, you could feel it. Like you said, Bobby tweeted it, but you could mm-hmm. feel from the guys that like yeah. they're ready. It's they're getting time. the chemistry going out in Which LA. Is good. We saw Randall, Bobby, ISO was out there. Yeah. Alfred. Yeah. Everybody's trying to get that chemistry going early, yeah. man. I, yeah. I like that. Up in LA, practicing. Like that. That's important. Like that. That's important because. Yeah. We got a roster. We're going to get into this. I know. We got a roster that it could go either way. It could go either <laughs> way, man. It could go either way, man. It, it was a long yeah. off season. Uh, I'm glad we got it over with. We was out in Vegas. That me up on Vegas. I know, Vegas, I know. Yeah. Vegas, Vegas, was, Vegas was, like, was like, we, we you, survived next the year. earthquake. Yeah, we survived. Next year, survived. next year, you got I mean, hopefully we're good and we don't need to be in Vegas like that's that. Because the I'm truth thinking. is, if, if you're a good team... If we don't get a high, high, high yeah. draft, you know what? are we going to be in Vegas for I mean, the 27th pick? I disagree, man. I you thought know? Vegas was so Actually, lit. We need to make it, it even though. bigger next It was lit. Because you know what? I will say, <laughs> Vegas I just said this live. after, like... Forget even just the games. The games were a little dope, but like that yeah. Knicks community, it was fun to be together. Was, yeah. Was amazing. yeah, just like a, amazing. I'm like we do a yearly Vegas retreat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I seriously, I yeah. feel like we had the most fans there. Oh, definitely. Even beat the Lakers fans. I feel like oh. Lakers didn't really have much of a draft to talk about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm telling you, man, everywhere we went in the Thomas and Mack Center, you either saw uh, uh, Knox jersey. Old Stocks, Oakley. I've mm. seen like oh, Xavier yeah. McDaniel, like people oh, like coming out. That, yeah, yeah, you saw yeah I saw Xavier. McDaniel. I was like, all right, bro. People were coming out of the woodworks. With yeah, all type of Knicks. I saw. Them, I saw. Man. I even saw Flavor Flavor on camera. Right Flavor, <laughs> <Flavor, laughs> walk yeah, right yeah, in front. Yeah, he was chilling. Yeah, yeah. Doc yeah, came through. We saw there, Dennis chilling, Smith. Baby. It was it's a cool vibe at Summer League, man. Like NBA yeah. have done such an amazing job of taking that. You look back at Summer League from 2003. No one cared. They made it an event, and we it felt like that. My first time there. It, it was dope. Knicks fans got to do the retreat. I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. We got to make it bigger, yeah, man. man. We got to make it bigger. I mean, the happy hour we did was cool. We had like 30 that was, people. Uh, yep. People come from far and wide, from the Bay Area, Dallas. Who's the guy from Texas? It was Dallas, right? The um, Texas yeah, dude. He was guy, dope. Jay, yeah. Shout out Jay. Shout out to him, man. Yeah, Jay drove from Dallas Woo! to Vegas. Yo, what? Wow. Wife and two kids. Yo, there's no debate. Dallas, there's no debate on fans wow. in there. It's, it's a rap. It's not, not even. Yeah, DJ Khaled, we the best. That's what it is. It is. That's what it is. It is. Real talk. Talk, man. Nah, but Terry, man, I'm glad you came. Um, yo, first of all, clap it up for the upgrade, man. We need, we need yeah, we do. Yeah, fan TV yeah. studio. <laughs> clap it up for the Listen, upgrade. Listen, well earned, putting in that work, putting in that content. Yeah, you man. deserve I'm excited and, you know, bigger and bigger things for everybody. We working, man. man. We yeah, working. We, but we the did. collaballations are great. The collaborations about, that we got in the team is great. That's a fact. Yeah, man. We got, like, a little Caribbean connection going on. That's true. You know I mean? So you from what? You from Trinidad? I was yeah. I was born Harlem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Represent. Shout out Dipset. Uptown. Uptown. Oh, went down. To, went down to Trinidad. Did high school. The primary. You know, primary school. Elementary school. High school. There. Came back. Okay. But I've been back and forth my whole life. So I right, seen. Right. I seen both sides. Yeah. So we got so Trinidad. You, you had in accent the popping out every now and yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, your <laughs> accent's heavy, man. Yeah. Your accent's heavy, man. Yeah. 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 Popping yeah. out. So we got right. Trinidad right here. Yeah. My yeah. people's are Jamaican, so okay. that's what I claim. 
I'm a Yankee. I'm a Yankee boy. Like, yo, listen, don't let the yeah, locks yeah, fool you. Know I mean? Yo, I still like Kyle Lou and shit. Yo, it's you know funny I mean? though, because because you, you you line us up, you line us up. They yeah. bet they betting my man J Ellis on the crib. Bro, 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 bro let me tell you something. I'm throwing you off. I profiled J Ellis like crazy when I first met him. Yo, you profiled me though. I don't smoke weed. I was like, I seen the threads. I was like, nah, but he don't really got a yardy vibe to him. Like, oh no, it could be Haiti, could be Trinidad. So I was like, you know what, it's Trinidad. It's Trinidad. And then one day after the show, yeah. we're talking to Jay Ellis, and I think we were talking about the West Indian Day Parade. Cause it's yeah. coming oh, up. coming up, Labor Day Parade. Labor. If you don't know, you, listen, it's insane. It's insane. You, in Brooklyn, it's, 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 it's not yeah. the same, though. It's not yeah. the same as it's home. Nice. Yeah. You need a bulletproof yeah, but vest, still. but it's live. It's live. Nah, it, not it's, even <laughs> now, because now, you gotta, now you, they got the... They got to they frisk you. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, they got to, like, I mean, to be right fair, now. there's been some stuff yeah, popping off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah if he was there, like, in the 90s, and 2000s, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, if yeah, I was yeah, there in 2014, too, too much, boy, <laughs> which is probably why I, I get this, yeah. the vibe from, because I, 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 I yeah. live and born in Brooklyn. Yeah, so, yeah, so you you get the mix. Yeah, you get the, yeah, in the right. mix. Yeah. So when he told me, I think after one show, he was going to, like, a Soka concert or something. That's what I was like, oh, oh, yeah. it's like, stance. Bro, I didn't even go to Soka concert. Come on, yo. Yeah, Moksha. I be saying, I was like, oh, my man from Trinidad. We live. We got the Caribbean connection to one, two punts. Yo, listen, listen. How about this? We Knicks win the we, Knicks win the championship. You guys come to Trinidad. We chilling in Trinidad. Bro, I, oh, I'm yo, Trinidad yo, Carnival. Yo, I, do, yo, I will do a Knicks meetup on a beach in Trinidad if we win a chip. Oh, oh call yo, me to that. Trinidad is definitely on the bucket. I'm going yeah. to Miami, though. Carnival, Trinidad, Carnival is yeah. on my list. Yeah. Trinidad, Trinidad is, is on definitely list, on my list. Bro. And you know what's crazy? Trinidad got like, I'm telling you, the Knicks in the Caribbean, man, because, uh, you know, Pat on Jamaica yeah, in the 90s, right, right, that was right. big. My grandfather passed away like you know, eight, nine years ago. I repeat to my granddad. He's the one who kind of made me a Knicks fan, and he's Trini, complete Trini. That's hard. You know, That's he came hard. up here in like the 80s, fell in love with the Knicks, yeah. and then when I was young growing up, he's the one who first got me watching the Knicks. So it, that Caribbean Knicks thing, yeah, I bet you we, outside of like the really crazy famous teams, yeah. We got like a long standing little history with the Caribbean yeah. Knicks. Yeah. And now if you look at our RJ is Jamaican. Too. Ah, yeah, RJ is Jamaican and, too, man. I all keep saying, if you listen to KOTs, RJ is Jamaican. Yeah. We got <laughs> we got like, our Bobby Porter's is a Haitian, Sakpa Okay. Okay. You know okay. okay. They, 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 they can come to the parade. It. It's, it's right around the corner, man. They can come to the parade nah. on Friday. They ain't sending them no, to the parade. Oh, oh, on Monday, I mean. <laughs> they, I mean, it's safe. It's they ain't sending them to the parade. It's safe now, yo. Come true, man. It's safe. They pay people. I'm not lying, but for that, that's on you, bro. Yeah, they ain't sending them to the parade. I don't want to email the Knicks. They said it talking about you. Yo, come true Monday. Is that the culture change you need? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. right, 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 right. Uh, well, listen, you know, listen, I'm, I'm glad for all the additions that we got. All the off-season hoopla aside, I thought that we went out, we did what we had to do. Yeah. You know, they stuck to the plan. They yeah. weren't going to go above, you know, say, tier three. They, they went out for Randall, and I think mm -hmm. Randall was a good investment for at least the two years. Everybody else, you could consider them on a one-year tryout, yep. so to speak. Maybe you could argue one or two guys was a little bit of a reach. Overkill. Overkill. Even, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I would say yeah. more overkill than reach. Yeah. Yeah. My thing is not that. I'm To be honest, if I'm just looking at the players on the roster, I'm like, cool, nice. I like it. I like how they did with Reggie Bullock, simply because talk about building culture and building that yeah. rapport around the league. Mm -hmm. They handled that situation well. Mm -hmm. yes. And that's something that's going to, you know, agents talk, players talk. No matter what happens to him this year, yeah. I thought they, you know, I respect them for that, and they right. think, you know, we're, we're trying to get to that level where we're going to be this organization. Right. So that's dope. But I will say, I do think maybe just in terms of maybe the rotation or even maybe taking on a bad contract, mm -hmm. if they had any real criticism, it would have been maybe one or two guys less take on a bad, take on uh, a that, bad yeah, deal, get, get another pick, or maybe it. just free up more space for tryout guys. Right. But that said, you know, look at the kind of summer. It was crazy, and was I, crazy. they reacted. They had their plan set. Yeah. Like you said, they that's had their obvious. plan B set. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool, those and Ninja Pete, man. Yeah, so, man. So today we want to talk about the five questions, the five storylines going into training camp. You know, the five questions that, that we came to a consensus with. I think the first glaring one is definitely the point guard yeah. situation. We got Frank out there in FIBA. Fan base is reacting to every highlight. Man, it's, Ooh, listen, yeah, I yeah, saw man. someone go ham on Frank for a game he didn't play. Oh, yeah. they were like, they were like, Frank got zero points. And I know my man Frank might get zero points every now and then. Right? I'll be real, yeah. I'll be real. Yeah, yeah, but they're yeah. like, he didn't, he didn't score today. And um, you know, I so much were like, oh, he didn't play. <laughs> <laughs> but we got nothing going on. They so the hunger is like everybody. Man. Yeah, I, I've been, I've been, you know, fortunate. You've been to be posting them, man. Yeah, I've been yeah. posting them highlights. And listen. I want I want to see this kid succeed. You know, going back to the Charlie Ward 
Uh, we we got to call it the Charlie Ward Award. We do right until right. we sign some. Until yeah, we sign, until we sign a guy. Yeah, right, you're right. You know right. I mean? Yeah, because if we're talking, Charlie Ward was the last player to make it to a second contract as a rookie. I want to have us be invested in all these kids. Yep. You know, from from beginning to end, and, and then we'll see. Um, but Frank, I just think he he's on an uphill battle. You know, yeah, against yeah. DSJ and Peyton. What, what do you guys think? The thing is with him is that. Always advertise as a long-term project. That's the yeah. thing. It's, mm-hmm. This isn't a case of, oh, you know, we're getting this guy. This isn't a case of, like, R.J. Barrett coming in and struggling. Right. And we're like, yo, what happened? You knew from the jump. The difference is his jump was supposed to be good. Because mm-hmm. yeah. I, was, I was really looking back at scouting reports and watching his rookie season and thinking about it. I'm like, Frank kind of did everything you thought. Above, uh, definitely a very talented defender. Right. And showed that. Good, good pass. So even if sometimes he might telegraph them, his vision's there. You can right. see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Him and Carlo Quinn that first year. He was yeah. making nice little pocket passes. Mm-hmm. But in France, and for the U18 French team and all that, his jumper, his open jumper was falling. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if you look at his form, people have been seeing from rookie year, there's nothing wrong with his form. This is, yeah. He might have a little tweak. Right. This isn't a guy with a broken jump shot. This is a guy who has confidence issues. And who, but, like, you can see him yeah, thinking yeah. through tell. the shot, man. Tell, man. So for me, it's like, if he, he hits a shot, it changes so much. But being drafted so high, you got the pressure of do they pick up that option at six, six million? million? Six million. Because you know, if, imagine Frank was a second round pick or a late first round pick, and you yeah. say, Yo, "I'm giving him six years. We're gonna we're gonna get him there bit by bit." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fan base isn't as crazy about him either way. Right. You know, you could put him in the G League without worrying about backlash. It's like we're building him, we're growing him. You know, you saw Siakam get grown over years. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the Giannis one everyone likes to throw out, but. It's it's uphill battle, but I'll say this: he's working. I think he's all. I think he's definitely gonna become a solid player at like twenty five. Yeah. Meaning, yeah. not that he won't be good later, before later then. On. I think he'll definitely start improving. But I think you, who people really want him to be, I don't know if he's gonna be here though. That's uh, that's and that's the thing. I don't that, think we give him that time. That's the thing. I don't think we give him yeah. that time. Yeah, like the w- the way Ninja P is kind of setting things up, man. You really don't think he's he's gonna get that time because yeah. like like you said multiple times. Every time it seems like there's a window of opportunity for Frank, something else happens. Either yeah. an injury, we bring in Dennis Smith Jr., we bring in up Kadeem Trey Allen, yeah. Moody Trey Burke, uh, we bring in Moody <laughs> yeah. and Alfred even, Payton now. Yeah, and, and right now, Alfred yeah. Payton, who was, 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 was be real, That's Ninja Perry's P, boy. <laughs> drafted, <laughs> boy. Yeah, yeah, drafted boy, him yeah. a long time ago, and mm-hmm. me, and Ter- me and Terry, we talked about this a while ago. We both had an eye on him. We actually like Alfred Payton. I do, because <laughs> a lot of what we yeah. like about Frank, Alfred, is, is, can actually do what Alfred is, what you want Frank to be, exactly. exactly, exactly. So it's like we don't know what's going to happen. I did. I I like Terry expected his jumper to be better because I thought did he shoot like close to like like forty percent from three or something? And or yeah, the first couple. And then the thing is Europe? when he's hitting it, like nice. it, you could see his, you could see him. He just flowing. A couple times he's done it right. Yeah. That Hornets game is what I like to bring up. Right. Mm-hmm. Like he, I look back at that game and I'm like he hit it. Like he was on point. He was asking for the ball when he swagged out. He's on. Yeah. Man, but the one he's thinking yeah. too much is it's he's a terrible. Thinking. And you know, terrible. Yeah, and yeah. even the MVC, I know. I think you posted about, about the uh, the MVP game, right? That he had when, yeah. in France when he was dropping. Who he dropped thirty? He dropped the finals. He, yeah. You watch yeah. that game and like the thing is with Frank and this is why people like him and you want him to succeed is that if he's hitting that shot with the, his mentality. Like this is a kid of twenty one wants to def- and since eighteen wanted to defend. Yeah. Right. So he's defending, passing, and then if he if he feels it, he can time it right and then mm-hmm. those threes. That's a championship guy on a championship team. Right. If he can hit the jumper, right. and that's. Right. You go back to I that, just think you know? the timing is not right. Yeah. Frankly. Timing, yeah. I think the talent and the timing, uh, I just don't think it's his, his yeah. time. I don't so, think it'll be. So it. many things happen, you know, yeah. KP going down, him and KP had chemistry, and then KP getting traded. It's like, you're right, so many yeah, things getting man. injured. Yeah. yeah. It just feels like a the bunch injuries of. injuries took a toll on him. Yeah. And also the fact that he just wasn't good in the second year, bro. He took a That's step the back. Thing. Yeah. That, that, um, he started well, like when he had that Golden State game, you were like, oh, I remember being at the garden, like, oh, this is it. Yeah. This is like the yeah. moment it's yeah. about to propel him. Mm-hmm. And then he started missing like crazy, couldn't hit a shot for like two months, then gets injured. Like you right. said, things just keep happening. One thing I want to bring up real quick, shout out to my man Vivek who brought mm-hmm. this up. Shout but out, Viv. It yeah. really r- reminds you of Boris Diaw. Mm-hmm. Boris Diaw was in Atlanta with Mike Woodson, who mm-hmm. a lot of people mm-hmm. might compare to Fizz. Boris Diaw was a point guard. People, a lot of people don't know that. He came in the league as a point yeah, guard, big point did. guard, right? He did. And him and him and Woodson just didn't click. And it was the same kind of thing. Like he wasn't shooting enough. He didn't like his style, whatever. Mm-hmm. Diaw goes through his lumps, ends up in Phoenix. Kind of offense for him. Boom, right. steps up. Spurs, he blah, blah, blah. He, he just took time. And he took time to and he needed the coach that fits him. Yeah. I don't know if I I don't th- I don't want to say right here and just say Fizz doesn't fit Frank, but I wouldn't be shocked to see a kind of similar scenario where right. it just may not happen here. It may not, yeah. it may not happen here. And that's I, that's, yeah. that's that's 
That's yeah. the prediction. Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen here, right. even though as much as I wanted to. Yeah. But it's like, that dude's going to be 6'8". He's going to be able I to know. change from 1 to 3 and even to 4 sometimes. Yeah. And I just don't see the path to success for here. Him. Yeah. I unless unless something like Alfred Payton, who's kind of like a shorter version of Frank almost, but who, <laughs> who is going to get injured again because you know he missed 40-something games last Michael. season yep. with the Pelicans. Mm-hmm. Unless something mm-hmm. like that happens where he's like, all right, here's your shot. And then Frank himself doesn't get injured again. Mm-hmm. And Kadeem right. Allen gets called up. I, then, yeah. Then we can see something happening for him, but yeah. FIBA is a big thing. I think we've yeah. seen we've seen some good things in FIBA, saw some of the same stuff. But I right. actually would say over the time he's been getting better, see more and more every game. He'll be coming in the training camp, off of like, and this is don't get it wrong. If you don't watch basketball, FIBA championship level intensity, not mm. skill, mm-hmm. but these for uh, guys around the world. This is the NBA Finals. Mm-hmm. Playing yeah. for their country right, from a yeah. smaller country. You saw Patty Mills yeah, in that exhibition game at Patty the crowd. FIBA, Patty Mills is a yeah. beast. Boy. He's a beast. <laughs> He's, He's a beast. beast boy. This means so much to these people. Yeah, so yeah. even if they're on NBA players, believe me, those games, and Fran- France should go far. Right. Those games that they're playing are like that level, playoff yeah. level yeah. basketball yeah. in terms yeah. of intensity. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he's coming in the training camp off of that. Yeah. So and he's going to be starting. He got and he's going to be starting. Start. Yeah. Right. So for me, if you if you think about it, what's the scenario where he could come in best possible? This is it. He's yeah. literally, yeah. I think FIBA final is like September 15th or somewhere there. Mm-hmm. So it's like 10 days before. So he's going to come in fresh. He should right. come in like, at, in his mind, he went through a training camp already. Yeah. 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 So if he's going to hit it, he should be coming yeah. to training camp like a beast, like should a dog, and right. show that. Right. So right. Let's go, Frank, it's, man. It's, show him what you got, man. It's true. <laughs> it's true. But there's two other dogs two there other dogs with him, there. man. Yeah, yeah, man. DSJ from the minute the offseason mm. hit. DSJ's been on a mission, man. He's been all over the map. Him and Keith Smart, he's working on that jumper. Jump shot. Yep. Coming into his third season. Injury played so far. The durability has been in question. The jump shot has been in question. Like we all, we already know the um, the deficiencies with DSJ, yep, right? Yep. But I think I've been saying it from the beginning. I think if we're gonna have a remotely respectable season, one that we could actually hang our hat on, be like, you know what, job well done, regardless of the outcome, it has to be DSJ. To yeah. me, in my mm-hmm. opinion, I feel like if you're going into this, if he doesn't beat Peyton out as a starting point guard. I don't see yeah. us. I don't see us having a season that that we want to have. I think we need to see DSJ take that jump in in his third year. That, that leap, carry us. That He's got to take that jump. Work. I think. I think. I don't put all my hopes in DSJ, but I put a lot of it. Yeah. yeah. Because I do still have some kind of like inkling that you know Alfred Payton can still be good, considering <laughs> he had you know five triple doubles in a row last season. He has a lot of um, chemistry with with Julius, Julius Randle. Yeah. And they did pretty well when uh, Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis went down with yep. those two kind of running the show. Yeah. And I think, like I said, people for people forget how good he did because he got injured the same way. They did Iso Zo when he got injured. Right. Iso Zo got injured, only played almost half the season. Everybody was like, oh, Iso Zo, oh, he didn't do it that well. <laughs> right. and, yeah. then, and then you look at the rookie list, and he has shooting better percentages than everyone he's left off the list. Mm. So you start to, you know, injuries give people short-term memory yep. loss sometimes. Yep. Right. So I feel like even though, like, I, I do believe that D- if DSJ does well, I still feel like there's a, a path for Peyton to do well as well. Even, yeah. though, I, even though DSJ, to me, of course, because of athleticism, yeah, has to a me, higher ceiling, that, right? That's, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. That's so the DJ thing is weird, right? Because one, Nick's social media is in love. They, they picked him yeah. since we didn't get people, right? Like, they're like, we're going all in. But, but it's, it's 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 funny because it seemed like we went from loving him when we first drafted Frank, like, oh, we should have got DJ yeah, to. Yeah. We had a chance at Kyrie and Kemba, like, oh, get rid of DSA, yeah, yeah. get rid right. of these I, I, I won't lie, I was writing his obituary. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I don't know if he's going to be here. Like, he's, I'm right. like, I don't know if he's going to back up Kyrie or right. whatever. Now, and now we back, like. You, you saw that video, he's shirtless the in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pushing, pushing. Yeah, yeah, yo, he's putting in work. <laughs> talking man. about New York, I'm ready. So, he's, he's putting in work. So, personally, I don't love that stuff, because I feel like that's, the reminds me of Brandon Jennings. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily the AJ, but I almost don't like how they're pushing him, like, that hard. Yeah. Like, I'm like, not that they send him to fail. But like you're putting a little bit more on him. It's a lot of marketing on DSJ. I, right I, I feel like more, I feel like last year was a lot of marketing on Frank last yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> there was there was there was some, but like nah, I feel like they hung it's out DSG on DSG yeah. on some yeah. crazy level. And I think it, it was even more so than Mitch. Like you saw Mitch with the social media stuff. Yeah. But yeah. they're pushing the AJ like yeah. yo, yeah. y'all better watch out. Well, listen, um, he was and, a piece of the poison industry. But he was. That's was. the thing. He's the we main need him to pan out. Part of it is need him to pan out. It's strategic, right? Because we didn't, you know. I, we, nah, the people who say we traded KP for cap space, that's dumb. No, nah, I'm not with it's that. not what happened. I'm not with it, no. yeah. Was that a part of it? Yes, but that's not what happened. Yeah. But because DSJ's the main guy back, and the summer didn't necessarily go how we thought. Right. Right. 
it's kind of like you, from just a marketing media perspective, you yeah, kind of right. want to show, hey, look, look, look yeah. what we got. Produced. We got, right. Yeah, so that's exactly. kind of, I'm sure something. that's the strategy yeah, behind yeah. it. But just to go with DAJ, I'll give you my thoughts on him. Mm-hmm. My biggest issue with DAJ more than anything is his fluctuating motivation level. Right. Mm. right he right. can hit a shot. I mean, the shot where, you know, he's working on, I'm not too, too worried about it. It was wor- way worse than I expected when he came over. Yeah. Mid-season trade, out of shape. I think he's going to be at a decent level. But he will defend and play hard based on who he's playing against. To, and yeah. it happens yes. a lot. Yes. You yeah, saw him yeah, barking yeah. on yes. Ben Simmons last yeah. year, right? Yes. right, right barking right. on him, in the, in the, um, trying to chase him out to yeah. the, when he yeah. going in the locker room. Yeah. Then you watch him against, I don't have it on top of my head, but you watch him against another point guard who maybe not engaging him in a one-on-one battle. Right. Maybe a point guard. I got a Ricky Rubio, right? He's the right. kind of guy. I can see Ricky Rubio playing circles around DRJ, passing game, playing yeah. defense. Mm-hmm. So DRJ not being that engaged. Mm-hmm. But then when a killer's coming down and trying to beat him up, now he's like, ah, I'm in it. Right. So for me, DSJ, what it is is like, can he do it every night? Right. Can he can he get this motivation level where it's not just like I'm trying to kill this next dude, but like mm-hmm. I have high I have standards for myself. Mm-hmm. I'm not dipping below here because he, he's moody. Right. Oh, he's right? definitely right. moody. Right. Isn't right. it? He's moody, and this is why Alfred Payton's steady head could end yeah. up. You never know. You know? Yeah. yeah, like you right? said, Alfred will so still. So he's moody. Away. You know, he's moody, and I want him to. And he's young. That's the thing. That's yeah. Twenty one. So that's something you work through. But mm-hmm. if he can get to that next level where he's like. I'm bringing it. I'm bringing it because I'm the print guard of the Knicks. Not I'm bringing it because I'm trying to bust Kyrie Irving's head. And I think that a lot of that is going to be on what Fizz does with him, man. Like Fizz is supposed to be that guy who's supposed to be guarding these point guards into a certain direction. He's done with Conley. Hopefully, he could do the same thing with DSJ and kind of just reel him in and give him that responsibility. He started saying he was going to do that last season. He's like, give him. He's like, hey, you're running. You're running the team team. now. Yeah, Mm -hmm. you're the man now. So let's see if. That added responsibility will, will, will put a batter in his bat to have more responsibility for himself, knowing yeah. that, you know what, the team has to follow me. Yeah, <laughs> And I yeah. wonder how much pressure he's going to be on a play Peyton, given that that is Ninja P's guy. He did pay him. Mm-hmm. He did, yeah. 10 mil. Yep. He did pay him. So I could see a situation in the beginning where if DSA comes with that inconsistency, that up and down, you're, you're going to mm-hmm. go to Peyton. You know, yeah. let Peyton finish games. And you kind of know where you're going to get, right? right? You know it's going to be steady. steady. You don't have to worry yeah. about steady Alfred hand. being like yeah. this or that. Like, he's going to be steady even. Like, he'll be in a nice range you can right. depend on. Mm-hmm. You know, with DSJ, like, there's so much up in there. Big year for him, man. Because, yeah, like, big yeah. whatever, if he's going to have a career, because if, if he's not great this year, and let's say we suck. Let's say he's not good. It doesn't mm-hmm. really work out. We're drafting R.J. Hampton, LaMelo Ball, and uh, what's the Cole Anthony. Cole Anthony. Cole like, mm-hmm. we're definitely going to be looking for a point yeah, guard next right. year. So, DJ yeah. really only has this year. season. You know, he's two years in, contract stuff coming up. So, he if he's going to hit it, he's got to yeah. hit it this yeah. year. But, you know, he's got to – I want him to have that mindset of, like, not just I'm, I'm killing it this battle, I'm killing it that battle, but, like, yeah. I'm here. I don't want to see him start the season off killing the first month because he's so hype off the summer. Mm-hmm. And then it, it, December, he's getting a call to go to Comes one oak. Back. <laughs> like, hey, I don't know, man. Too litty. Yeah. The joke Alfred, 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 Alfred got it. Syndrome. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, listen, Peyton, yeah. um, what they say after the All-Star break, he he, he was averaging nine assists. Come on, man. He can run right? a team, was next to, what, LeBron, Westbrook, and, and Trey Young. So you know what you get from him. He can run Almost a team. Sleep. Both he and DSJ are highly inefficient scorers. Shooters. Shooters, yeah. Right? yeah shooters. At least with DSJ, you know the athleticism can take you there and, and – uh, uh, he can he can be a much more dynamic scorer than Alfred. Uh, Alfred's gonna jump on the boards, m- maybe a little bit better defensively than DSJ. Yeah, definitely better. I, you know, I don't, I don't know yeah. what you guys think. Definitely. Maybe slightly. That he he so Alfred came in with the reputation of a good defender. Right. I think mm-hmm. rookie year was pretty good, but then like he actually got so a lot dips. worse. He got over worse. Time. He got I worse. feel like I yeah, feel like the all, new environment. Go ahead. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, you're right. You're saying with the environment and, like, if we're trying to build this dog mentality of, like, we're not letting dudes come punk us, yeah. I'm hoping to see Alfred then pick it back up because you know what? He's capable. Yeah. And NBA guys, you see it all the time, man. They come in. David Lee's a good example, right? David Lee was a scrapper when he came in. Mm. But then when he started hitting that jumper, he was like, oh, this is <laughs> 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 You saved my energy. Yeah, 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 yeah man. <laughs> Absolutely. So you got to, you know, it's a give and take. It, it, you see guys, it's effort level with defense a lot yeah. of times. So you'll see, but. Mm-hmm. Alfred's our guy. We spoke, but we, we liked him for a yeah, while. Yeah, man. We liked him for a while, yeah. man. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like years later. It's like, oh, wow. We talked about Alfred. Full yeah. circle. Here we are. Full circle. <laughs> yeah, yep. so I'm, I'm interested to see seeing how, how it goes down with the three of them. Uh, I'm interested I to mean, see how it the shooting is obviously an issue. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if let's say Randall's really killing it and yeah. you know, RJ kind of hits the ground running and maybe, mm-hmm. I don't know if Kevin's starting with the three or, or Marcus, Marcus, but Marcus. Mm-hmm. you could see Alfred maybe fitting better and having right. DJ come off the bench right, kind of right. like more of a killer. Yeah. Right. Once they have that mentality, then maybe, you know, we'll see. But I think DSJ is going to start. I yeah. think they're like setting it up for that. Alfred would have to go ham. 
in he training can. camp. Yeah, right. I mean, they, they, yeah. they told him, though, it's like, hey, man, the starting job is wide open. It's open. They told yeah. him that mm. as they were recruiting him in L.A. So, yeah, it's we'll see what happens. It's going to be a dogfight. You know what? Perry, he kind of set up this roster to be a dogfight. And even when he first got here, his whole philosophy was you got to earn your minutes. No one's mm-hmm. going to be going to give him anything. So I feel like he set the whole roster up pretty much just like that. Like, yeah. yeah. We're not sure. giving you nothing. Remember when Fizdale promised Moutier a start? <laughs> he was injured and Fizz Day was yeah. like, oh, he's back. got a he'll chance to back. start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll I remember some dude was like, to start? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what? No, he's serious. No, nah, but, he's you know, like serious, you said, that, you know, we're going to have this fight. I think one thing people forget, too, is preseason's a thing. I'm not thinking back. Last year, it was a title. Preseason yeah. showed a lot because yeah. Frank actually played pretty well in preseason and yep. ended up getting him to start over Knox. Yep, over the three. Which surprised people at the time. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Pre-season- I, predict- I predicted it. Ooh, I'm- did. I'm- <laughs> did. I'm did. Listen, it. so we'll see because I think, you know, training camp's going to be a battle. You get all your eyes, you see it. But mm-hmm. when preseason starts, we're going to see everyone get minutes. Yeah. yeah. And it'll be interesting to see who, who kind of pops up because I can see a guy like Iggy maybe shocking some people. You know what I mean? It's- I mean, I've been, saying, I've been saying, and so let's kick it off into Fisdale and yeah, because I'm getting right? So now, now yeah. that we're talking about other guys, I 